Hi, my name is Michael Yosley, and this is Project 2, External Flow over 2D Bodies. This is going to be our half hemisphere shape, and this is for design of aerospace experiments. Uh, as you can see, we have the workbench open, and we're going to get straight into creating the geometry. Okay, so we're going to want to right-click on this. Edit Geometry and Design Modeler. That's what I like to use, and I already have it open up here. This is our wind tunnel from our previous experiments. So what we're going to want to do is use the zoom box. Zoom into our test section so it's a little easier to draw this half circle that we're going to be doing. And because we want our blockage ratio less than 10%, this is a six inch test section. So we're gonna need this to be at 0.6 inches, meaning our circle is going to have a radius of 0.3 inches. And I found it's easiest to do just a line straight through and then use the trimming tool to make sure that everything is connected right. So we'll just draw a line like that. Go to our modify, trim, and then it cuts it right back. It stops at the axis as well, so you have to recut that. But all right, and there we go. We have our hemisphere shape in the middle of our wind tunnel. So we'll go back out, generate everything. Uh, we'll go to modeling. This isn't letting us do our name sections yet, but we'll create our surface from sketches. Make sure you just click sketch one. You have to make sure that you do all this as one sketch though, because I've done it in the past where of the wind tunnel in the XY plane, and then it just kind of populates to the bottom if you draw any curves or anything after that, and then you can't leave that spot out causes problems when you're trying to create everything as a fluid and it kind of just goes over what you had there before. We'll generate that. Go into our surface again. Okay, surface the body. We want to make sure we change this to the fluid because everything that's highlighted right now is going to be the, the air going through the wind tunnel. Now we should be able to do our name, section, name selections. And you have to be pretty precise about this because it will do it automatically and count this as your inlet so that that's where your flow comes in as long as you name it correctly. I misnamed the outlet on one of my iterations through here and it doesn't recognize it as the outlet. You have to go through and manually connect it. So I got to the end and it just wasn't working. That's, that's the issue. There we go. I better make sure that I got this in the one set up correctly. Because I think I have it. Yeah, I have it set as a body, you see. Um, edit selection. So you have to make sure you're only selecting the edge. Because this is going to be 2D. Okay, then what I like to do is zoom in here and add another generate and another name section called the tip. And this is from just to keep everything consistent when we did our airfoil. So we have the tip and the tail. Select the edge, generate, I'll zoom back out, make sure 
Everything looks good. Make sure our surface body again fluid. before we're going to update this as well. Right click, update before we go into mesh. Okay, this usually takes a second to load here. Alright, there we have our geometry populated in the mesh window, so we should just go over here. We're going to click on mesh, change our physics preference to mechanical. And I changed the element size to 0.041667 so, because that's in feet. So that'll give us a mesh for every half inch. We'll go down here to sizing. We want to turn adaptive sizing to yes. All that should be good. Before we generate, we'll make sure we got inlet, outlet, tip, tail, everything correct. Generate. Okay, you can see down here in the bottom left it's still applying the mesh. Alright, there we go. That's our, our mesh applied everywhere. You can see there's a spot where you can see right through where our object is in the center of this wind tunnel. Click generate one more time. Make sure that's updated. Inlet, outlet, tip, tail. Now another thing you want to make sure before you go into mesh, I forgot to mention this, is you want to make sure analysis type is set to 2D. Can run into issues later as well. So now that we've got that done, click update. Show in progress. Over here on the bottom left, it'll also tell you updating, busy, done. All right, now we'll double click on setup. All right, before the setup section pops up, this is going to come up. Now this should be set for two dimension, like I said. Then we're going to double, or we're going to select double precision, display mesh after reading. We're going to start. Okay, now the setup is populating. Uh, this is why you have to make sure that you name your inlet and outlet correctly. As you can see, you got the blue arrows coming in, red arrows going out, and then you go over here, boundary conditions, you have inlet, outlet. But we'll get there in a second. So you go to models. You want to turn the energy toggle on. Click OK. We want to change viscous to epsilon rather than omega. Pops up this k epsilon two equations. Everything else just leave it at the default. And that's everything from models, materials. It's got our fluid as air. Unless you change that, it's going to default to air and aluminum, which is what we want. Now we're going to go to our inlet, and this is where you put the airspeed going into the inlet of your wind tunnel. So the speed in the test section is going to be faster than it is the inlet, which is basically through the contraction chamber. So our inlet speed, we want to set for 3.2927. That's meters per second. Click apply. 
close. So we're going to set our outlet. If you want to double check that, it should be at gauge pressure. We'll pull it up right now, actually. The gauge pressure should be zero, meaning that the atmospheric pressure is the outlet pressure. Gauge pressure is zero. Close. Okay, everything in there should be good. Double click on methods. Coupled, we want this to be simple. Everything else remains in default. Okay. Our residual. You can pull this up. And all those to default. Okay, so we're done with setup. Solution, click initialize or initialization. Standard initialization. Leave everything at the default. Click initialize and click run calculations. Number of iterations. For more complex ones, you want to turn the number of iterations up higher than that. It takes more computing power, so I leave it set for 100 for simple calculation like this. Calculate. Now this part is going to take a second, as you can see. Zero percent at the bottom. There's running out our through our iterations, residuals. Going all the way out to 100 iterations. Calculation complete. All right, one of the things we want is a contour of the velocity. Contour of velocity, velocity magnitude. We want this on the interior surface body. We got everything else standard. Save and display. And that gives us this. We we'll also want to go down here to reports, forces. We're going to select all of these. First, we're going to do one in the x direction. Okay, and then what we're going to do is go back to our workbench and pull up our results. In the results section, we can make a little clearer contours and a little better graphs in the results section. Okay, our fluent results section is populated. So let's go into this and we'll make another velocity contour just to show you the difference between these. I have to name this one velocity one since we already have another one named velocity. We don't want it just at the inlet. Symmetry one is the entire thing, symmetry two. Symmetry one is what we want. Velocity. Here's the other options they have in here. You can use whichever one of these you want, but we're just doing velocity. Global. We'll apply that. Okay, and then we'll try to get this straight down look. 
So yeah, that's a little, a little clearer in the other graph that we had in the other section. And here we can also do, I uh, want to unclick this first. We'll get our streamline. 3D streamline, all the maze. Starting from the inlet, equally spaced. You can change this number of points if it seems like it's getting a little too crowded and you can't see what's going on. Or if you're not getting enough points, increase that number. Click apply. And from out here, it looks pretty similar to our velocity. Uh, you can see there's there's nothing right behind our object, so we're going to zoom in on that a little bit just to see what's going on. Let's see. A little clearer view of what actually happening around our structure. I'm not sure why it's looking like that kind of rounded, like a not really a semicircle in this, but I think it's just not loading properly. So that's it for project two. Uh, hopefully that helped. My name is Michael Yosley. Thank you for watching.